So Dr. Fournette, there's a range of staging systems for HCC. Um, can you kind of give us an overview of the ones that you think are important and, and which ones are, are, do you utilize to make treatment decisions? Sure, there's, um, the staging of HCC is often a, very, a, a bit complicated. There is, you know, anywhere from five to 10 staging systems that have been reported in the literature. Um, and whenever you know that there's that many staging systems, you know that none of them are perfect because if there was a perfect one, that would be the one that we use. So it, it can be quite complicated. And the reason that it's really complicated is because when it comes to HCC, oftentimes the cancer plays just as much of a role and as the cirrhosis and the underlying liver disease as, term, as far as what treatments the patients are gonna be eligible for as well as what their mortality risk is. So something for instance like the TNM staging system which as an oncologist you're very comfortable using for lots of other cancers really doesn't work very well with liver cancer because it doesn't take into account the underlying liver function at all. There's the Akuto staging system and the CLIP staging system. Both of those look uh, a lot at the underlying liver function and include things like bilirubin, like albumin, um, INR, they include, but then they also include how big is the tumor and the CLIP score also includes whether it has um, venous invasion. And you add up these numbers and it gives you an idea of what the survival of this patient is. The problem with those two scoring systems is while they look closely at the underlying liver function, as far as the actual tumor, it, it's really not very specific. It's sort of, is it greater than 50% of the liver or less than 50% of the liver? Which really, that that's, doesn't really divide people very well. So another staging system is the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center nomogram. That's not really a staging system so much as it helps to predict if, if someone's going to need blood transfusions during a liver resection, which is very helpful for surgical planning as well as for patients being educated. Probably the, the best staging system we have right now is the BCLC staging system. So that's the Barcelona Clinic Liver Cancer Staging System. Um, the way that that staging system works is that the first thing that you actually look at is the patient and the underlying liver. You look at the performance status of the patient. Are they healthy? Are they functional? What's their ECOG score? Then you look at the child pew score to look at the liver function. Are they child pew A, no ascites, no encephalopathy, normal bilirubin, albumin, and INR. If those two things are good at that point, then is when you actually bring in how much cancer there is. And it might be one lesion that's less than two centimeters and that's a stage zero. If it's you know, one or, or two or three lesions and resectable, you go to resection, uh, transplant is an option. The BCLCB is more where you're bringing in your transarterial therapies. C is, is the advanced patients that we're talking about here, where we're talking about systemic therapies. And then BCLCD are the patients that are so advanced that really we're offering them best supportive care. Interestingly, the BCLCD patients, they might be so advanced because of the amount of tumor, but more often it's because their liver is very ill. They have ascites, they have encephalopathy, they're jaundiced, or they have a poor performance status. And those patients, no matter how much cancer they have, you're not gonna change their outcomes by treating the cancer. So the BCLCC is nice because it has all of those things and it guides you towards different treatments. That's probably the staging system that we use most commonly. Um, it, it's not perfect, and there's been lots of discussion about the different sets of staging, like BCLCB, really subdividing them into how many tumors, how big are they, the C, do they have vascular invasion or not, or metastatic disease, to try to so really tease out a little bit more what their overall survival is and what the best treatment options are for these patients. As you know, these patients are a really heterogeneous group. So, you know, sort of putting them all into a staging system is, is obviously quite difficult. We hear about MELD scores, and MELD score is not really a staging system, but how do you think about MELD score and does it inform the stage of the patient? Yeah, so the MELD score is something that was developed actually in 2000 and uh, not late 90s, early 2000s for, it was originally developed to predict who was going to do well after placement of a transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt or a TIPS shunt. 
We then realized that the MELD score was so good at predicting three months, six months, one year survival that we implemented it to determine where patients would be placed on the liver transplant list. So that's where we are predominantly using MELD score. However, it's really good at giving us an idea of how bad is this person's liver. So the components that come into the MELD score are the bilirubin, the INR, the creatinine, and then recently we've added the sodium. It goes from six uh, up to 40, and the higher it is, the sicker your liver is. We know that, for instance, someone who's got a MELD score of 10 to 12, their liver function is really pretty good, and they're gonna tolerate a lot of the you know, systemic treatments that we're gonna offer. However, those patients, if their, bili if their MELD score is 10 to 12, not six, they may not tolerate a resection, for instance. So that can really give us a, a good idea beyond the, just the child pew score of how somebody's liver function is, is actually going. Okay, and the last question I have about this is the Milan criteria. Mm -hmm. It seems like the Barcelona staging system may supersede uh, the Milan criteria, is it incorporating it? So the Barcelona Clinic Liver Cancer Staging System incorporates the Milan criteria. So the Milan criteria is where we can determine if someone's going to be eligible for a liver transplant. So that's if you have one lesion, it's up to five centimeters. Or if you have more than one, you can have up to three centimeters, but they all have to be less than three, uh, three lesions less than three centimeters. So if somebody's in that criteria, they get points on the liver transplant list and their chance of cure with a liver transplant is 90 to 95%. Now, that, that's incorporated as part of the BCLC staging system. We are then, of course, moving past that a little bit now with transplant, where we're now downstaging people, where they might have a lesion that's six and a half centimeters, but yet with chemoembolization or Y90, we can shrink it to less than five centimeters, and then they're, they're within Milan criteria and may be able to get listed.